All right, 1800. We're going to go with our trusty 1E4. <clears throat> okay, so as far as I remember, we haven't faced the Karakon too many times. And there are a gazillion setups that you can choose against the Karakon. It actually doesn't matter as much what setup you choose. What matters more is that you know it well. Uh, we have, I think, played the Fantasy. Uh, the only time that we faced the Karo, we've played the Fantasy. Let's repeat it, and let's see how it holds up at this level. That's the move F2, F3, which doesn't have the greatest reputation, but in my opinion, very undeservedly so. An incredibly tricky line that can lead to quick victories if black is not very precise. Okay, so we, we have a trade on E4, now E5, and that is the main line. And this is a classic idea. You don't want to take on E5 because there's a super nasty check on H4. So what you want to do here, and you also don't want to go C3 because that doesn't stop the check on H4. So you want to play this almost Vienna style. You go Knight F3. The fantasy is very annoying for Karakon players who often like a more quiet positional game, and that is one very good way of choosing openings is you choose lines that are, practically speaking, very unpleasant to face and also are theoretically demanding. Bishop G4. The main move, um, and that's, that is that is a good line. Bishop g4 is a good move. So it, it pins the knight. And again, we don't want to play d takes e5. That's not in the spirit of the of the opening to allow the queen trade, and then black is going to win back the pawn. Does anybody know what the correct move is here with white? So it's bishop, yeah, very good. So the correct move is bishop c4 aiming at f7, and there's an obvious tactical threat of bishop takes f7 and knight takes e5, the classic idea. Now, you might look at this and say, wait a moment, what if black takes the knight? Well, don't miss the forest for the trees. If black takes the knight, you take back, and you have a massive attack on the f7 pawn. Bishop takes f3 is a terrible move here. And black, once again, has to be very precise. Yes, precisely. Exactly. Reminds me of Michael Tall. Well, this is a, a very well-known line. I didn't invent this. If anybody, uh, those people watching on YouTube, once this comes out, yeah, if anybody knows what the drink is, you get a uh, million dollars. <laughs> okay, knight f6. And that's immediately a blunder. And this is honestly why you choose lines based on what your opponent is going to not like to face. I, I really find it odd that he thought for a while. So he must have seen the idea of bishop f7. Probably what happened is that he didn't realize that after knight takes e5 check, we're attacking the bishop with two different pieces, and it's only going to be defended by one. So we obviously still have bishop takes f7 check, and it's quite crushing. Now, the move is knight d7. You have to know knight d7 to cover the e5 square. Okay, so he's going for this, but now we're two pawns up. The king is in shambles. We're completely winning right out of the opening, like eight moves in. This isn't even borderline winning. This is just winning. Two pawns up. It could become one if knight takes e4 happens, but we've got mating ideas on the b3 g8 diagonal, or I guess a2 g8 diagonal, technically. So we have these kinds of ideas, coupled with the idea of attacking down the f-file. I just don't see black surviving this more than a couple more moves. No, it's not alcoholic. It's not absinthe. <laughs> knight d7. That's about as good of a move as any, but it leaves us with our center intact. I feel like we can decide here between the materialistic approach, which is knight c3, in order to protect e4. But we don't really have to do that. We can also just castle. I mean, do we really care about the c4 pawn? What we, what we care about a lot more is the open f file and activating our pieces quickly. So largely, it's a matter of taste. We even, yeah, we do have the move c3, threatening queen b3, but that's a little... I, I don't love c3 because it doesn't address... Well, maybe I actually do like c3. That's a very interesting move. The problem, let's say c3 black goes h6, though. I feel like you're over-relying on a gimmicky threat, and you're under-emphasizing development. I think that square should be reserved for the knight. So I, I'm having a hard time deciding between castles and knight c3. Let's just go knight c3. I feel like that's just probably simpler. It's probably simpler to keep the two extra pawns, and we'll castle on the next move. But yeah, don't fall for one move itis in these positions. That's actually a very, very common type of mistake, not a specific mistake, type of mistake, where you see a mating pattern that kind of looks cool and you get very excited, and you don't ask yourself whether your opponent can actually stop the threat. You think, oh, c3, queen, b3. I'm a genius. But, you know, that comes at a cost. 
And now, of course, we castle. Now, of course, we castle, not fearing bishop takes c3 and knight takes c4, because without the dark squared bishop, in addition to everything that we've already pointed out, the dark squares are also going to be really weak. So that, I think, is going to be the last straw. Utterly, utterly overwhelming. This is honestly, you know, this he's he's queen c7. Okay. Well, I think it, time has come for us to sort of step on the gas pedal. Well, what does that mean? What there is a move here that to me looks incredibly good. It's it's good no matter how you look at it. It's just it's it, 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 it's quite natural in my opinion. I think some of you probably are contemplating bishop f4. I know some of you are thinking about that, but I don't like bishop f4 as much because that blocks the f file. Again, resisting the temptation to just make a move because it threatens the opponent's queen. Yeah, the best best move I think is e5. The idea is to get the knight off of f6. In fact, you control the f6 square so that after knight takes g4, queen takes g4, you're threatening queen e6 checkmate, and black cannot put anything in the way of the rook. Then we're using our center to dislodge black's only remaining defender and this is a disaster for black queen d3 was proposed as well oh intending queen c4 yeah no that was good too okay well that was obviously pretty one-sided but you know blah blah it's a good that you lost the game here and not you know in some rated game well i guess it is rated, but you get it back and it's uh it's um very important to know the fantasy it's not common at an 18 level at all. It's really not common at any level, but that's also what makes it such a dangerous weapon. But you, I assume you missed... Did you see the threat of bishop takes f7? No, it's okay. If you, I mean, if you're not familiar with this line, it's not easy to figure out exactly what you should do. But I'm curious if you saw bishop f7 or you missed it entirely. What was the logic behind that f6? I saw it but didn't realize... Oh, yeah. I think you saw it but didn't realize that the knight back, back attacks the bishop. Yeah, the move here is knight d7, only move. And then the line continues, so white castles. It looks very scary for black, but black is in time to put the knight on f6, covering the rook. And in this position, white generally goes c2, c3. Why not queen f6? Well, because you don't want to do with your queen what you can do with your knight, right? Queen f6 puts the queen right on the rook's x-ray and creates tactical potential with uh, discovery. Obviously, white would have to... I think the move h3 here is very strong for, for white. Because if you take... This shows you why you don't want to have a queen doing the job of a knight. Because you have to move the queen away and you lose f7. If you move h5, then you run into g4. Yeah. So, you develop your knight. White goes c3. Intending queen b3. This time, queen b3 actually is a good idea. Because it creates both a battery and an attack on b7. And um, bishop d6... And you get this very complicated position with a lot going on in the center. And you can do some research on your own if you want to know more about this. White has bishop g5. White also has queen b3. And queen b3 black castles. And then taking this pawn is very, very dangerous for white because white is very underdeveloped. So the bottom line is that black has many good systems against the fantasy, but all of them lead to really sharp positions that... Uh, that are not to the liking of the average Karokan player. In terms of what Black's other options are, if you're a Karokan player, Queen B6 is a relatively recent move that uh, that some grandmasters like to play. The point is to put immediate pressure on D4, and there's this idea. It's not a great line, but I like to do this online. Move E5 here, D5, Bishop C5, and again, if White is not careful, this could get really, really. Spicy knight g2 gets checkmated on the dark squares So white needs to know the move knight a4 and now This is a very classic Way of dealing with this battery. You have to make sure that the e3 square is protected by the way anytime you do this This is often missed at lower levels this particular checkmating mechanism now here obviously you have a bishop that guards e3 so if black does this he has to move his queen to d4 and then you get a very interesting endgame that I've had online a couple of times. White is better, but white has to know, you know, a bunch of accurate moves here and a bunch of theory. Paris sounds pretty good. Okay, you two people, there's like a separate conversation going on in the Twitch that has nothing to do with the speedrun. Um, 
So that's one line. You can also play e6, which is a little bit passive, but also a very reputable, reputable system. Knight c3, bishop b4 resembles a win our French. It's got a lot of similarities. And uh, that's that's about it. I mean, I would definitely do some research if you're on the black side of the Karakhan and, and you want to know, know it well. Um, other than that, yeah, once, once bishop f7 happens, the game is over. You take the bishop. Had black taken the pawn, I mean, white castles. I see a couple of online games continuing knight d7, and now queen d3 looks crushing. Now this threatens queen b3, and it attacks the knight, so it's a, a fork, and and there's very little to talk about here. Yeah, a pretty short short but sweet game. Thank you, Blood Latte. I appreciate you um, volunteering to play. Is queen f3 not good? No, queen f3 is also good, of course. No, queen f3 also good doesn't shouldn't even matter yeah it's just chess you know like you miss one little tactic and that's it the game is over chess bro with a 37 months you're good that was uh plenty instructive all right guys 2 30 am i i gotta i gotta hit the bed i'm i gotta be up in five hours so if you want good commentary in the morning you gotta give me a little time i know that was a short game but we'll definitely definitely try to put in a stream tomorrow and uh, thank you, everybody, for the ridiculous support, Jam Jam. 